Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be top, talking about topics under the standard 1.2 in fourth grade and topics under the study island lesson called number sentences. So this lesson is going to be about where you get a, an object or a symbol or a blank and you have to figure out what number goes in there that will make both sides of the equation equal. And so there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can do guess and check. You can do use the opposite operation. Or you can think of it as a scale that you have to keep balanced. So as we're going through those notes and the different ways of doing that, please be taking notes so you can have those to refer back to when you are trying these problems on your own. And also, you can even pause at the beginning of the video, work the problem out by yourself, and then watch the video so you can check yourself so you can see what areas you're doing really great in and what areas you still need to practice. So I'm so glad that you're joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. So when you think about an equal sign, you can think of it as dividing the equation into two sides. And each of those sides has to be the same for it to be equal. So on this side, the left side of the equal sign, I have x plus 3. So I can put use a scale that has to be balanced to model or represent this equation. So on the left side of the scale, I'm going to put an x and three dots. And so this x represents some mystery number that will keep the scale balanced. On the right side of the equal sign, I have a seven. So I'm going to put seven objects or dots on the right side of the scale. And so I just have to figure out, okay, what is x here going to represent in order to keep both these sides the same. So I can cross out objects one to one to see what it is that x would have to equal in order for the sides to be the same. So each, if I, I had three here and I crossed out three here, which left four left over. So that means x here has to be four in order to keep the equation balanced. And when I check that by substituting it back in, so replacing the x with the 4, 4 plus 3 does equal 7, so that equation checks out and I know my answer is right. So here I have a blank that I need to figure out what number I need to fill in there to keep both sides of the equation equal. So I can think of this as a scale. This is would be, I'd have 4,082 on the left side, and then I have some mystery number plus 3,690 on the right side. And I need to figure out what this mystery number should be so that when I add this 3,690, it equals 4,082. Well, I don't know that fact off the top of my head that isn't one that you memorize in first and second grade, so I'm going to do opposite operations. What that means is since I'm adding on this side, if I subtract these two numbers, then I can find out what my answer is going to be. So I'm going to take 4,082 minus 3,690. So 2 minus 0 is 2. I have to carry and borrow here. Sorry, I need to borrow 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So that means that 392 is the number I need to put in my box in order to make both the sides of the equal sign equal. And I can check it. If I take 3,690 and add 392 to it, and I add those numbers... I get 4,082, which is what I was hoping to get. So that means that both sides here are, are equal to 4,082. So that means not 392 is going to be my final answer, which is choice A. Here I have a variable, which is a letter, that I need to find out what that letter is holding the place for, what letter, what number that letter represents that will keep both of the equations true, both sides of the equation true. So I have 23 
and then some mystery number being added together on the left side, and I have 63 on the right side. So I can, if you know that, if you can look at that and know what the answer is, that's great. Um, if not, then you have the options of doing opposite operation or guess and checking with the multiple choice answers. So opposite operation, the first way would be is since this is addition right here, I'm going to subtract these two numbers and see what my answer is. So 63 minus 23 is 40. And then I, you can check that. So if I were to put 40 here, that means 23 plus 40 would need to equal 63. So if I check that out, I do end up getting 63. So it checks so that my answer B is going to be the final answer. If you wanted to do the guess and check method, that would mean that you would take 23 plus 4. That equals 27, not 63. So that's going to be, that's not going to be your answer. And then you could check out 40. If you take 23 plus 40, that does equal 63, like we showed here. So that isn't going to be your answer. And then you'd always want to check the rest of them to make sure you didn't make a mistake. But that 23 plus 86, what does that equal? It doesn't equal 63, so it's not an answer. 23 plus 39, you would figure out what that equals. It's not 63, so it's not your answer. So that's the way to do both of those methods. This next problem, I have a little bit more going on on both sides of the equation. On the left side, I have 9 plus 5. And then on the right side, I have h plus 5. The h just represents some mystery number that I'm trying to figure out what it is to keep it balanced. So I'm looking at this, ba this balance, and I see that I have a plus 5 on both sides. So if these two boxes here are equal, and they're both addition, then the other part has to equal also. I also ha That means I have to have a 9 here so that all of them are the same. That's the only way to get them to be balanced. So that means choice B, 9, is going to be my final answer. Now I'm going to look at some subtraction problems. So here, on my left side of the equation, I'm going to have some mystery number minus 2,927, and that's going to equal 2,081. So that's not a problem I know right off the bat. So I can use guess and check using the multiplication. So I could take choice A, 5,009, and subtract 2,927, 2,927, and I could see what that answer is. If that doesn't work out, then, then you're going to try 5,008 instead of 5,009. So you, you, and then you would work out that subtraction and look to see if you get this answer, 2,081. If you do, that's great. If not, then you need to try the next one and then try 5,018 here. And then you'll try 846 here until you get an answer that will give you the 2,081. So... You can also do opposite operations. So since these are being subtracted, if I add these two numbers, then that will all give me my answer also. So 1 plus 7 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 9 is 10, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5. And so 5008 looks like it's going to be my answer. So I can always check that though, and I already have that problem right here. I can take 5,008 minus 2,927 and see if that really does give me 2,081 on both sides. So 8 minus 7 is 1. Then I need to do some borrowing. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 9 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. So it does check out that this equals 2,081. So that means B is definitely going to be my answer. Here, I'm just trying to find out what this symbol, the at symbol here, stands for. What number? So, and I can go through my options here. So, if I'm looking at 11 minus some number, what number here will give me 4? So, I can go, these are smaller numbers, so I could quickly go through my answers here. So, would 11 minus 6 give me 4? No, that would give me 5, so that's not going to be the answer. 
Would 11 minus 7 give me 4? Yeah, that is 4. So 7 is the one that gives me 4 on both sides, so B will be my final answer. This one is a little bit more, has a few more steps to it, just because it has a couple of numbers being subtracted over here. So I'm going to make this a little simpler looking by going ahead and doing the 19 minus 7. So 19 minus 7 is 12. And then I still have the minus f equals 7. And now it's just like the problem that we did before. I'm trying to figure out what number I can put here for f so that when I subtract it from 12, it gives me 7. So here I have 12. I can test out my answers. So if I have 12 minus 4, that equals 8, not 7. So a can't be my answer. Then I have a 5, so 12 minus 5, that equals 7, which is what I'm looking for. So that means my final answer here is going to be B, 5. This problem, too, has a few more numbers than the first ones we looked at, but just like before, I can go ahead and do this addition. So 1 plus 3 is 4, and then I just, the rest of the equation stays the same. So I can do opposite operations, or I can use guess and check with the multiple choice options. So if I do opposite operations, I'm going to have 2 plus 4 is 6. And if I go ahead and check that out, two, 6 minus 2 is 4, so that means both sides are 4, so it checks out. And that's going to be choice A as my final answer. Here's an example with multiplication. So I'm thinking, okay, what number, three times what number is going to get me to 27? So I can use the answers they give me to guess and check. Would 3 times 24 equal 27? Would 3 times 9 equal 27? 3 times 10 equal 27? 3 times 30 equals 27? Which one of those creates the math fact that equals 27? And that's going to be 9. However, you could also do opposite operations. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So 27 divided by 3 equals 9. And then you can check it out. 3 times 9 does equal 27. So it checks out. And so that just confirms that our final answer is B. Here's an example with division. So I can go ahead and look at my choices here and fill in the blank to see which one makes sense. So would 6 divided by 4 equal 10? Would 50 divided by 4 equal 10? Would 14 divided by 4 equal 10? Or would 40 divided by 4 equal 10? Which one of those is the correct math fact? Or you can do opposite operation again. So the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So I can take 10 times 4 is equal to 40. And if I put 40 in that blank, 40 divided by 4, that is 10, so it checks out. And so choice D is going to be my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.